That's a very good delivery and that's a brilliant header. Oh my God, Joe Willock out of nowhere. Managed to connect with the ball. A fantastic cross. Wendia. Oh, Callum Wilson is through on goal somehow. Big chance. Has to score. Callum Wilson 1v1 and that's in the back of it. We've actually taken the lead. Here we are back on the grind with Newcastle United in this road to glory career mode. We're just a week away from the January transfer window, which I'm super excited about because I definitely want to start thinking about making some signings. And you know, if we sell a few players here and there, we might just be able to pull off a really good signing in the January transfer window, which is my goal. And let's not forget, we've got some exciting fixtures as well. FA Cup action against Palace. We might try and fit this game against Arsenal as well. We'll see, but a lot to look forward to in this episode. For a while now in this series, we've been stuck in the ninth spot in the Premier League, which I'm not fancying right now. So I'm hoping in this episode, we can change that. Six million in the bank right now, but I do have a certain plan plan that I'm going to try and execute in this episode in terms of selling a few players. So if we can pull that off, we'll be looking at some good cash to bring in signings. Let me know in which position we need to improve the team even further for this upcoming January transfer window. Keep in mind, we can make only one signing. That's the rule we've got for transfers. Three signings in the summer and one in January to keep things realistic. Now, if you guys are enjoying this Newcastle career mode, I'd really appreciate if you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. Helps the channel grow, helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you are new around here, subscribe for daily FIFA 21 career mode content and let's get things underway. Press conference to kick off the episode. Fabian Shah has been very underrated from the start of this series. You're not wrong here. Fabian Shah has been amazing for us at the back. He's even managed to win a Player of the Episode award and he's kind of been one of our unsung heroes. We're not conceding as many goals as we probably would because of Fabian Shah. He's really solid at the back. He's got very good all-round stats for a centre-back. I mean, he's got 72 passing as a defender. The dribbling is 72 as well. Very decent. Good stats all round and no wonder he's performing so well for us and I'm so glad we've got him at the club. Let's hope he can keep this level up. The only shame with Fabian Shah is that he's 29 so I don't know when he's gonna start dropping in his overall but when that does happen it'll be brutal. Next up and this could definitely start some controversy in the comments section. Sell Joe Linton because if you get some money you can buy a young player who's got high potential I've been thinking about this for a while now. Whether we sell Joe Linton or not, we'll be left with only one striker. But then again, we've got players like Joe Willick who could play there. Saint Maximin as well can play as a striker. Hell, we could even use Ryan Fraser in that position. So, is it even, you know, making sense to keep Joe Linton, who's in pretty bad form, not really doing all that much for me? We could get a good 11 to 12 million for him and free up some wages. You know what, guys? To improve the rest of the team, I think I'm going to pull this off. I think I'm going to pull the trigger on a Joe Linton sale, make it happen, use the extra funds to improve the team elsewhere. I think that's got to be the play. You guys have been telling me in the comments section, Joe Linton hasn't been great for Newcastle anyways in real life. It makes sense to do this. So in this episode, we'll try and ship off Joe Linton. And hopefully with the funds coming in, we can use that to improve our team in other areas. Next up, when are you planning to try your Youth Academy players? Now I know you guys are super hyped to see the next name are Adriano Enriquez in action or even Miles in action. But it's going to take some time. To be fair, Adriano Enriquez, we're probably going to promote soon because he's already 17. But it's going to take a bit for Dylan Miles. We'll see how things go. But you guys can probably expect to see all these Youth Academy players in action more in season two rather than in our first season. So exciting times ahead though with that press conference done. Saint Maximin is really coming into his own in this series. Last episode he was phenomenal with a brace against Spurs of course that was one of our best games of this series and well he picks up the player of the episode award. Now as we discussed I'm gonna be selling Joe Linton hopefully for as much money as I can to try and improve the team elsewhere. I'm thinking we sell Joe Linton we should have about maybe 15 million or so maybe about 20 million I'm not entirely sure. And I want to use that money into bringing in a really fast centre-back. Someone to partner Shah. That could be the play and that's what I'm thinking right now. Or maybe even someone to replace John Joe Shelby. Those are the two positions I feel we could really do improving with. And we'll have to figure things out. Let me know in the comment section what needs to be done. For now though, we still have a bit of time before the transfer window opens. So why not get into a Premier League game? And it's a tricky one as we take on 6th place Wolves. Now you guys know... Playing at the Molyneux, I don't really have a good record, so this game could go either way, but still, 
Let's, let's keep our good run of form going and let's try and get a result against them. Within the winter period, we've got games coming in thick and fast, so I've had to make a lot of changes for this one. Willett comes in cam, we've got Longstaff starting as well. Darmit gets one of his first starts of the season. I think I really should be using him more often because I think he's one of our quickest centre-backs. But anyways, that's our team. We're taking on a strong Wolves team. This is going to be a tricky game, but hopefully we can come on the right side. One thing I do not like about facing Wolves is their formation. The five at the back that they use is very effective, especially when you've got really fast wingers and fullbacks like they've got. Their right side is so quick, it's going to be difficult to deal with. They've got Adama Traore and Nelson Smedo. Uh, that's going to be a nightmare to handle. Looks for Miguel Almiron as he tries to bring this one inside. Can't, but Longstaff gets it. Phillips now. Sees Jamal Lewis. Inside for Callum Wilson, a bit of space here for Longstaff, big moment for him, let's go Sean Longstaff, I'm pretty sure that's his first goal in a Newcastle shirt in this series, what a moment for the kid as he makes it 1-0 against Wolves. I think we deserve it, we've been the better team, we've been showing more intent and we get the goal that we deserve. Brilliant run of play as well, Callum Wilson picking up the assist for this one, Jamal Lewis involved, some neat build up play, Longstaff with a stunning finish and well... He's managed to get himself a goal for Newcastle and we're 1-0 up against Wolves. Come on. Here we go with Miguel Almiron looking to bring the ball inwards. Good pass for Callum Wilson and suddenly we're the dominant team as St. Maximin has gone through. That is unbelievable from St. Maximin. Oh my god, what a finish from him. We gotta sip the tea on Wolves for that because it was it was simply sensational. That is, I think, the second time in this series St. Maximin has gone for the cheeky chip and pulled it off as well. Callum Wilson turning provider again. Oh, that is brilliant from St. Maximin. I think the keeper almost got there, but at the last minute, St. Maximin went for the chip and there was nothing he could do about it. And well, we're doing it up against Wolves. Phillips looks for Wilson and again he's managed to send Longstaff through. What is going on in this game? Sean Longstaff, no! Patricio makes the save. We still might have the chance. It's given away. We could be 3-0 up at half time here. I'm not even kidding, but... Ah, luck's just not been with us. To be fair, we're doing up, so we shouldn't be complaining all that much. Longstaff looks for Joe Willock, who's had a phenomenal game, guys, as he's broken through again. The strength of Joe Willock is there as well. Could be 1v1, he is, and he manages to score. Joe Willock at Cam is a different animal, guys. Honestly, every time he's played in this position, he has managed to shine. I'll, I'm really keen to see his stats in that Cam position. 3-0 up against Wolves. I think this game is done. I just don't see Wolves coming back here because we've just been ruthless. This might be one of our best performances in this series. I mean, apart from the Spurs game, that was just simply special. But wow, first half 3-0, we've completely destroyed Wolves at Molino. And this is a team that normally really annoys me. So I'm pretty happy about that. Half time and already feel like the job's done. We've just been so dominant here against them. Honestly, getting an early goal in the Prem is just so useful because then teams have to open up. And that's where you can take advantage and that's exactly what we did here. I think I'm going to make a couple of changes now for the game. Ryan Fraser to come on for St. Maximin. I'm also going to rest Calvin Phillips. And maybe we'll rest Fabian Shaw as well. Actually, you know what we'll do guys? We'll give Jamal Lewis a bit of a rest. We, are, we don't really have many fullbacks at the club. So this is what we'll do. And we'll just quick sim the game boys. Because it's done. There's no freaking way... Um, Wolves are getting back in this with with three nil up. To be fair, it was close. We almost choked, but three two. I'll still take it. Okay, even before the trans window opens, we're seeing interest from Barcelona for Joe Linton and Atletico Madrid. Very very interesting. I'd love to sell him to Barcelona because I feel like that's where we'll get the most money. So let's first anyway negotiate. The first offer comes from Atleti. Let's see where they're willing to go for Joe Linton. The more money we can get, the better it is. I'm going to counter with 15 million. Whichever club is willing to give me 15 million for Joe Linton, they can take him away 100%. Let's see. They're willing to only agree at 12. Let's counter then with 14 and see. Come on, come on. Give me 14 million for Joe Linton. What kind of negotiations is this, man? Honestly, let, let, let's go 13 and a half. Come on, Simeone. Meet me, meet me at 13 and a half. Meet me in the middle, man. Come on, 13 and a half. Oh god, we've messed up the first offer for him. We we now need to sell him to Barcelona. Wait, why can't I negotiate with Barca for him? Why? Yo, is this some sort of a glitch? I cannot negotiate with Barcelona for him right now. No actions available? Oh wait, I can. I'm such an idiot. I didn't know you could like swap down and see that. 
I'm such an idiot guys, I've been playing career mode for years and I still couldn't figure that out. Anyways, let's negotiate with Barcelona and try and get the best possible fee. Okay, so I'm thinking we counter with, again, about 14 million just to see where Barcelona are at. 11.1, oh, they're even worse, I probably should have sold him to Atletico. Let's, let's counter with 13 million and see what they're saying. Come on, 13 million, Barca, you've got the cash. Oh, you know what? I think I messed up. I should have sold him to Atleti, but I don't want to really take a chance now. I'm selling him to Barcelona for 11.1 million. Joel Linton has been sold to Barcelona of all clubs. It just sums up Barcelona, you know, just signing average players. But oh well, it, it, it works for us. Getting back to some more Premier League action as we take on Southampton at home. Most of our first team players are relatively fit for this game. It's the winter period, so every club is struggling for stamina. But we should be able to get through this one. The question is, can we win? Oh, come on. It's a draw. I'd expect a home win against Southampton. We're still on only four home wins for the season and we need nine, so... This is a bit of a bomb. I probably should have played this game, you know? And so, guys, the transfer window has opened. Now, we're not going to do any business until we sell players like Joe Linton. So, we're just going to have to be patient and wait for the deal to go through. Until then, we now find ourselves with an FA Cup game against Crystal Palace. Now, normally, these kind of early FA Cup games would be games I simulate, but I don't want to take a chance. If we can make it to the FA Cup semi-finals... That's going to help us unlock bonus sponsors. So we've just got to try and make it happen and see how far we can go in the FA Cup. So let's play this home game against Palace. And if we win this, it'll be our fifth home win of the season. And that'll really help. We're definitely going to have a few rotations here to keep fitness levels up. But most importantly, I'm trying St. Maximin at striker. Because we might need him to play in that position. Because Callum Wilson will be our only, you know, out and out striker until the end of the season if the Joe Linton deal goes through. So we'll try him out there. Ryan Fraser plays on the left. Willa keeps his spot. Longstaff as well. Let's go out there and knock out Palace from the FA Cup. One thing I do not want from this fixture is a draw because then we'll have to go through a stupid FA Cup replay. Let's avoid that. Looks inside. Oh, that's brilliant play. Joe Willock has done so well that he couldn't get the shot off. Oh, that was neat. Joe Willock really does well in that camp spot. He's more of a striker itself because he tries and makes runs beyond, you know, the back line. Very different from like a Buendia. Really enjoying Willock in that camp spot. Calvin Phillips and I see St. Maximin making the run and this is the benefit you get of playing St. Maximin as a striker. Goes for goal. 1-0 up against Crystal Palace. The power behind that shot was oof. Unreal. And I think it was Calvin Phillips with the assist. Good to see. We're 1-0 up. Just what we needed. It's advantage Newcastle in this FA Cup game. Let's go. Oh my god. They've broken through. I don't want to give away the lead that we've worked so hard to get. And that's exactly what we've done. Defending was not on point here. Palace get the equaliser. Ah, frustrating, man. Since we were actually playing some good football. Anyways, we're going to have to do all this again. Tries to find St. Maximin. The pass wasn't good, but Willock looks to find Ryan Fraser. Big chance for him. The moment he's been waiting for for a long time. Ryan Fraser puts us into the lead against Crystal Palace. A lovely finish right there from him. Joe Willock providing. Trust me, man. For some reason, Willock seems to be broken in this game because he seems to be like controlling the midfield. He gets forward, even tracks back and helps out defensively. A complete midfielder. I, don't, I have no idea how he's doing it, but... Let's hope this continues with Joe Willock because, of course, we've got a loan to buy offer on him. And I'd love to make it permanent the way he's playing. 2-1 up against Palace. Let's now defend the lead a bit better than we did the last time. The dribbling is neat. Looks for long stuff. Back for St. Maximin. I'm waiting for Willock to make the run. He's made the run. Goes for goal. Joe Willock yet again on the score sheet. Yo, this, this, this kid has got something special in him. I, I just... And I don't know what that is. He's always in the right position, winning balls, driving the ball forward. What a player we've got with us, honestly. Wow, Buendia better step things up because Joe Willock is looking like a demon in this game for me. And he's just dominating. 3-1 up against Palace and that, I feel, should settle our spot in the next round of the FA Cup. Not gonna lie, guys. Playing St. Maximin as a striker just gets him involved in the play so much more. And that might be a very viable tactic against certain teams. Like, look at this. He's now dictating the attack as he puts Miguel Almiron through. Let's see what Almiron can do here. Looking for maybe a cutback or going for goal himself. On the second shot, he puts it in. Miguel Almiron, what a strike. 
4-1 against Palace and I feel that should be it. There's no coming back for Palace. I mean, in this episode, we're playing some bloody good FIFA, honestly. First game, we were 3-0 up and now we're 4-1 up against Palace. Yo, let's go. We're booking our spot in the next round of the FA Cup. And I think with that, it's time to quick sim this game and see this one out. I am going to make a few changes. Um, let's just give St. Maximin a bit of a rest. Joe Linton will come on. We'll bring on Hendrik as well. Definitely want to give Calvin Phillips a bit of a rest. So that's the substitutions we're making. And we're going to jump to result. There's no way Palace are making a comeback. There you go. 4-1 is the final result. Job done. Who would have even thought Joe Linton would be playing for Barcelona? It's a guess a move that works for him. Hopefully he'll succeed there. I highly doubt that. But 11.1 million is what we sold him for. We've received an additional 8 million into our bank account. That puts us at about 14 mil. I want to try and up our budget even more to make that signing because I don't want to sign a random player. I want to sign a good player and we'll need a bit more. Is there any other player in this squad that we can look to sell that I'm okay with selling? John Joe Shelby? Probably, yeah. Maybe one of the two defenders we've got here could be a good shout. Hendrik as well I haven't bothered using. Huh, options are there, we'll figure things out. You know what guys, Jeff Hendrick, I know he plays occasionally for Newcastle in real life, but I, have, I haven't found the need of using him because we've got Almiron who can play there, now Joe Willock as well, of course Ryan Fraser, it just doesn't make sense to keep him, you know, so I'll, I'll put him on the transfer list and let's see how much money we can get for him. Back to the Premier League we go as we take on Arsenal at home, another opportunity to get a home win under our belt, we're on 5 home wins I think so let's try and make it six but this is going to be a tough one because it's Arsenal although they are five points behind us you never know against Arsenal they could you know step things up in a game or just completely disappear let's hope they disappear against us okay this is gonna be a really difficult game because take a look at this we don't have Saint Maximin we don't have Willock we do not have a lot of our key players. Almiron as well. They're just not fully fit for this game. So we're going to have to improvise a lot for this one. So Longstaff. Um, Sean Longstaff starts at Cam. We've got Buendia playing out wide for this game. Ryan Fraser starts on the left. So a different setup. But we've got no choice. We've got to try and improvise. And also I think I'm going to give Max Arens the rest as well. He's been playing way too much football. We'll play Kraft instead of him. Also it'll be his first game this season that I'm trying to use him. We'll see how things go. Arsenal using a five at the back formation, which is very annoying. Let's see what happens on the pitch here. Not gonna lie, I seriously don't expect us to get a win here against Arsenal because, yep, you've seen our team sheet. It's not the regulars playing, so I don't know how to approach this game, but well, we'll find out what happens. Arsenal did beat us earlier on in the season at Emirates, if I do remember. It was a goal from Lacazette. It was a one nil win. Yo, I think we actually played better than them in that game. They just got kind of lucky. So, well, let's hope for a different outcome in this one. We've still got players like Callum Wilson playing, so we still have a good chance. We'll need a big performance from Buendia, who's definitely under pressure with, of course, Joe Willock's emergence as Longstaff tries to play a pass in, but doesn't work. By the way, Mesut Ozil's still playing for Arsenal here. Pretty sure he made a transfer away from Arsenal. I don't know what's up with that. Arsenal on the break here looking decent with Lacazette breaking through. Going for goal, Jamal Lewis. Wow, what a block from him. I thought that was surely going to be an Arsenal goal as Longstaff now tries to figure something out in the attack. But honestly, we just about survived conceding there because Arsenal, they probably deserved a goal from that. Fabian Shaw looking to build from deep. Tries to play it for Callum Wilson, who's actually done really well. Callum Wilson has broken through. Difficult angle forces a big save out of Leno. Fabian Shaw was superb there, bringing the ball from deep. But Callum Wilson probably could have maybe scored. Leno with a great save, though. Although we still have a chance with Phillips. Looking for Buendia here. Good pass inside for Wilson. Callum Wilson with the goal. Is he onside, though? I'm not sure. I, I thought he was surely offside there. But turns out somebody was playing him on. And we've taken a shock lead against Arsenal. To be fair, it's not really a shock uh, lead because they're like behind us in the Prem. But still, even without a lot of our first team players, we're playing some good football. Buendia picked him out brilliantly. And what a finish from Callum Wilson. Yet another goal for him in the Prem League. How many has he scored for us now? 11 in the Prem. Come on, boys. We're one up against Arsenal. We're playing some great FIFA today. Halftime against Arsenal. It's not really been an exciting game of football. Few chances for both teams. But when we got our chance... We took it and let's open the second half. We can defend well. Lacazette. Oh, he's broken through. We can't let him shoot. We cannot let him shoot. Aubameyang instead shoots. But Dubravka with a big save 
Thankfully, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang couldn't generate power on that effort. Corner for Arsenal, obviously dangerous because it is a set-piece. Ball comes in, cleared away, so that is indeed nice. As now we could do damage on the break. Here goes Wilson. Looks for Fraser. Back with Wilson now. Good touch to beat Bellerin. I see Longstaff making a good run. It's a brilliant counter-attack. Longstaff back for Callum Wilson. This is superb football. And what a counter from Newcastle. I think I'm finally getting to grips on how to play with this Newcastle team. And it's proving to be really effective. We're dominating now. Arsenal 2 0 down to us at St. James's Park. What a lethal counter attack. Literally from a corner that Arsenal had. We've managed to break away some neat football. And it's Callum Wilson scoring his 12th goal in the Prem. Oh, John Joe Shelby now breaking through. Arsenal are losing the plot in this one. Shelby. Ball played out wide for Callum Wilson. Could get a hat trick. It's a hat trick for Callum Wilson. His first hat trick this season. And it's going to be a memorable one. And that actually closes the gap down quite a bit for him. Potentially winning the golden boot in the Prem this season. He's been on fire lately. Callum Wilson with a hat trick against Arsenal in the Premier League. As I said, Arsenal have been terrible this year. That's why they're five points behind us. But still, for Callum Wilson to come out here and score a hat trick is incredible and he's just done that. Chance for Martinelli to get a goal for Arsenal and well they do get a consolation goal but it's not really going to matter because the game's practically done. We're going to win 3-1 now. One hell of a result guys for us to do this against Arsenal. Incredible. This season we've really put in some big performances against big teams which is a good sign for the future. Callum Wilson deservedly taking the match ball home. What a game from him. We've got a couple of transfer offers coming in. One for Fabian Shaw, which I think I am going to reject. Kind of pointless, you know. I don't want to be selling Fabian Shaw. One for John Joe Shelby. And this is certainly interesting because we could get this money and maybe improve our midfield even further. But then again, we've got the two Longstaff brothers coming up. So it's kind of stupid to do that. I'd rather invest in a centre-back because all of our centre-backs are ageing. So... I think we'll keep Shelby for now. I, I don't want to let him go. He's still pretty decent in that centre mid spot. For me, I think the plan now will be to invest in a centre back. That's what I'm thinking for in the next episode. I'm going to try and maybe sell the likes of Hendrik or maybe even Clark to bring in a centre back. A bit of a risk selling a couple of players, but we've been fairly injury free so far this season. Might be a risk I'm willing to take. Selling these two could free up a lot of wages and as well bring us more transfer fees. And then we can go in for a centre-back. I want to make that transfer in the next episode. So if you guys have got any centre-back suggestions, keep them coming in the comment section as we're going to make that move next episode. But honestly, what an episode this has been. I'm surprised we're still ninth. Like, why aren't we moving up the table? The point gap between us and Everton closed down to just one. We could actually leapfrog them in our next game. So we are making progress in the end, which is great to see. Next episode should be fun with all the transfer stuff. And of course, big games like this one. We've drawn Chelsea in the FA Cup. Sponsors wise, this was a good episode. We're on six home wins for the season now, which is awesome. We've got a positive goal difference in the top half of the table. So we're going well. At least we should be able to secure that Jeep sponsorship. Can we really give plate of the episode to anyone but Callum Wilson? A hat trick against Arsenal for Newcastle. Like, come on. It's gotta be him. So guys, that's that for today's episode of the Newcastle Career Mode. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. And if you guys aren't, really appreciate it if you could smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you for all the transfer drama in the next episode.